All right, what's happening? Y'all should Rico from Street Scores, and the NFL schedule has officially been released. I know I'm coming out with this video pretty late, but y'all know me, man. I got to do a deep dive into the schedule. I'm not just here to read y'all who we play, where, and when, and things like that. We're here to do a very deep dive into this schedule, man. I'm here to give y'all a full Commander's 2024 schedule analysis, and we're going to look at a couple of trends as well. We're going to talk about not only easy and obvious things like strength of schedule but we're also going to talk about when we play opponents after their bye week so when do we have situations where our opponent has more time to prepare for us than we do when was the last time we played an opponent in that environment at their home stadium and what happened in that game like really detailed super advanced stats type of stuff so i can't wait to get to this that's why i'm so late because i wanted to make sure i did as much research as i possibly could shouts out to nikki javala and zach selby for a lot of the stats and background information i'm gonna give y'all in this video of course and also towards the end of the video we got to talk about things that are even outside of like the commander's stretch of things with the schedule release like how we have so many multiple streaming services that you're gonna have to subscribe to just to try to catch every NFL game this season we're gonna talk about that briefly I may do a whole separate video on that later on really breaking that down of course I'm gonna give y'all everything that you need to know about this schedule but before we dive into all of that make sure y'all stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative of an opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the content make sure you follow all of the social medias the Twitter the TikTok the Facebook the Instagram endless content coming out there as well and make sure you stay tuned because i'm working on film sessions for every draft pick and even some notable undrafted free agents so i'm gonna keep y'all updated with daily content i mean it's really to the point i should be doing at least two videos a day i'm gonna keep y'all updated on every practice that we have access to as far as the media goes because a lot of the practices dan quinn and those guys shut it down from anybody on the outside to be able to know what's going on that's why i couldn't give y'all a breakdown of today's practices if you were wondering why i was not able to put that video out today so make sure you stay tuned for all of the content because i have so many fun ideas as far as videos go as well like depth chart predictions and certain breakdowns like i'm working on a video where i'm gonna show y'all with graphics and pictures of what defensive personnel group and we'll go out there in certain situations like third and one or fourth and one or third and long first and ten who should be on the field projection wise for our defense so just make sure you stay tuned for all of that i'm super excited i so much content on the way and but i'm sorry i wasted so much of y'all time let's go ahead and dive into this video right now let's get it adam adam And again, like I said before I played the intro video, I believe the second day of OTAs, which was today, was cut off from the media. So that's why I don't have a video breakdown on it or I didn't upload any clips or anything like that because I don't believe anybody had access to it except for like the commanders players and the coaches themselves and i guess maybe the official washington commanders media team but i didn't even see them post anything from it but all the way moving on here is your 2024 washington commander schedule you see the preseason we played at the jets in new jersey at miami and then versus new england in landover and then regular season wise we play at tampa bay 4 25 p.m then week two we play the New York Giants in Landover September 15th at 1 p.m. Then week three at Cincinnati September 23rd. That's a Monday, 8.15 p.m. Then week four at Arizona September 29th at 4.05 p.m. Then week five versus Cleveland in Landover October 6th, 1 p.m. Then week six at Baltimore, even though it's right up the street, October 13th at 1 p.m. Then week seven versus Carolina in Landover October 20th, 4.05 p.m. Then we play the Chicago Bears October 27th in Landover at 1 p.m. as well. Then week nine at the New York Giants November 3rd at 1 p.m. Week 10 in Landover versus the Steelers November 10th at 1 p.m. Then week 11 at Philadelphia week 14. That's a Thursday night game, 8.15 p.m. Then Dallas, we play them in Landover November 24th at 1 p.m. And then also week 13, 
We played the Tennessee Titans in Landover December 1st, the day after my birthday at 1 p.m. So that's good. I get to enjoy my birthday. Then I can stream the day after that. That's pretty cool. Then we have a week 14 by week. We're going to talk about that, of course. Then week 15 at New Orleans, December 15th at 1 p.m. Then week 16, we play Philadelphia in Landover, December 22nd at 1 p.m. And then we know that we play the team I hate the most out of the entire NFL, the Atlanta Falcons in Landover, either December 28th or December 29th. We'll see time to be determined. And then, of course, we end the season against Dallas once again, week 18. And we don't know what day that will be, nor what time it will be just yet. Also, if you're looking at the preseason schedule, um, John Com also went and updated the fact that just a little bit later after this official post was made by Nikki Javala of the schedule, we will play Miami that preseason game on August 17th again in Miami. Just to let you know, we still don't know the time yet, but at least we know what date. So August 17th in Miami and then August 25th against New England and Landover to wrap up the last two preseason games. And after that, we have 53-man roster cuts, and then it's on to the regular season. Now, let's start with a lot of the major analysis. And before we dive into all of the commander stuff, I ain't gonna lie, as much as I hate the Falcons, I gotta give their media team props because i feel like they had the best schedule release video and i would argue we probably had the worst i'm not gonna lie they need to hire me to help with that one but i thought theirs was great even the shade that they threw against us man and they even made fun of the fact that we're confused we play here but we practice here and then we claim that our team is here we play we play in landover we practice in virginia in ashburn but then we claim we're the a dc team with the Washington. i thought that was funny and they already basically said that that's an automatic win they're not even concerned about this but i also love how they did cowboys fans i feel like the best part was when they uh when like he basically stepped on a cowboys fans helmet on top of the fact that i just love nfl street like out of all of those older games like i saw somewhere on twitter somebody say like would you prefer to have san andreas nfl street nba street and another really famous game the only game i really cared about that much out of that whole group was nfl street i would pay 70 dollars for an upgraded version of nfl street right now but outside of that rant when he stepped on on top of the cowboys helmet player to basically avoid his tackle you heard the cowboys player say go lakers and i love that i love that because man cowboys fans are for sure known as the biggest bandwagoners yeah i mean it's always a, a guy that's a fan of the cowboys the lakers and the yankees somehow just fans of all of the big major teams that have a history of winning so they never have to worry about what losing feels like i love that shot at the cowboys but now let's dive into our actual 2024 commander schedule observations we're going to start with some of the macro ones the one of the more obvious surface level ones and then we're going to just go deeper and deeper as we get into the video so this first section macro observations so the commanders will also have another home game this season for a total of nine in their 17 games you flip back and forth i believe that the entire nfc has nine home games this season and then next year the entire afc will have nine home games and so this is the season that we end up with more home games so that means also two of our preseason games will be on the road i didn't know until nikki javala pointed that out that the more home games you have during the regular season means you have out of the three preseason games more away games oh I, I didn't know that I, I didn't even pay attention to that that's really cool and then also of course the worst part of our schedule in my opinion is having that very late bye week again and this is our third year in a row getting hated on with that late bye week week 14 is not okay for us man me personally and I just feel like somebody at the NFL office is hating on us. And it's even crazier the fact that this is the third straight year that we've had a week 14 by week exactly. Like literally just 2022, 2023, and 2024, the same exact week 14 by week. It really feels like they're just being lazy and just copying and pasting that part, to be completely honest with you. But there is a glass half full angle you can take on that late by week. It just depends on how our team health is basically playing out at that part in the season because there is a chance that a december bye week could actually be a huge help for a team that's like a big playoff contending trying to make a push for the playoffs like you just got to survive those first 13 weeks but like a very healthy and i mean health is a very luck based as well so a very healthy and a very lucky but also a very good team 
probably prefers a December bye week out of all of the potential bye weeks that you can get. So best case scenario, ideally a late bye week will be great for us, but I've, I'm just not sure if we're ready yet for a late bye week is my point. So we'll see. Also, another two bad parts of our schedule are, first of all, three of our first four games are on the road, which is not ideal. And we have to play the Steelers and the Bears after their bye weeks so they will both have more time to prepare for us than we have time to prepare for them for as far as those two matchups go i do not like that at all and then we have no sunday night games i think that's personally a good thing like as a person that streams i prefer as many sunday 1 p.m games as possible so that i can have like a consistent streaming schedule and be able to wrap everything up including the, even the call-in show after games before like extra late at night like before 1 a.m please so selfishly i'm happy that we have 10 1 p.m games only three 4 p.m games and only two 8 p.m games so far because week 7 and 18 17 and 18 are to be determined with flex capabilities there but right now we have at least 10 1 p.m games right now i love it again being selfish as a streamer and then also no thanksgiving game yes sir this is another characteristic of our schedule that i am selfishly very happy about because on thanksgiving i'm trying to be with my family and, and I, I you know what matter of fact i'm going to be with my family no matter what so that's a guaranteed game that i can't live stream and watch with y'all every season that we end up playing on thanksgiving so i'm happy i mean most of the men in my family and all of my friends that pull up i mean we'd be like men alone like 20 deep so we're all gonna be downstairs watching football on a huge tv regardless of who's playing whether it's the commanders or not so it honestly doesn't matter who's playing to us and on top of that a lot of my friends and family are fans of other teams again i'm from atlanta so yes i'm falcons fans you have a like a nice mixture of different football team fans that that pull up for my thanksgiving so i mean generally we don't really care about watching the commanders anyway especially outside of me so we're just here to eat laugh watch some football take an itis nap so i would definitely prefer for the commanders to not play on thanksgiving also no christmas game either thank goodness same thing because for me christmas is literally thanksgiving part two for my family and me so i wouldn't be able to stream if we played on thanksgiving either so thanks goodness for no christmas games and i'm very sure when you really think about it their commanders players don't want to play on thanksgiving and christmas they want to be with their families too so I'm happy for them as well. Who wants to be going into getting into dozens of proverbial car crashes for over the course of four hours on Thanksgiving and Christmas rather than being around your family and eating some good food? So shouts out to the commanders, players and coaches and the entire organization. You do not have to work on Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'm sure that they're even more happy about it than I am. Also, all teams play each other on a rotating cycle, of course, thanks to an NFL schedule formula that began began all the way back in 2002. So this season, the Commanders will face all four teams in the AFC North and the NFC South. We already knew that as of like a couple of years ago. They will also play two interconference games and one non-conference game based on their last place ranking in the division last season. Just to give you like an overall background of like how these schedules are made and how we can already know certain opponents that we're going to play even a couple of years in advance just to give you that heads up now let's dive into some deeper observation and trends not this is not the deepest dive yet this is like a little middle right here we started off with a little warm-up now we're getting we're starting to cook a little bit more here and then we're going to dive into like a really deep strategic part in analysis of our schedule so shouts out to nikki javala and zach selby again like i said before the intro because now we're getting to the part of this video where they provided a few of these observations so first of all we only have two primetime games this season for the Commanders. That's week three at the Bengals, Monday night football, and week 11 at the Eagles, Thursday night football. And just to let you know, because I originally thought, well, doesn't every NFL team have to at least play one Thursday night and one Monday night game? Not necessarily, because the Carolina Panthers, as you can see on your screen right now, the Carolina Panthers have no primetime games. And just to let you know, 
like Ari Marov said, I, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. I need to go and definitely take some time to figure out how to pronounce his name. You know, a matter of fact, at my sports update on Twitter, his reminder says primetime games for the NFL just equals pretty much any game at night. The Carolina Panthers don't play any games at night. Then you have the Colts, the Patriots, the Cardinals, and the Titans who only have one primetime game. And then it's us with the Vikings, the Raiders, the Broncos, and the Jaguars who have two. And then you just keep going up and up and up. And I'm not surprised with Aaron Rodgers over there with the star-studded Jets, even though it failed last year due to Aaron Rodgers getting hurt like as soon as the season started. But them, the 49ers who were just in the Super Bowl, and then the NFL's biggest brand, as in the Cowboys, have six primetime games. I think it's shameful, though, that the Kansas City Chiefs, who have just won Super Bowl after Super Bowl since um, Pat Mahomes has been there, is not up there with the most primetime games. But it is what it is. It's not our problem. Going back to the Commanders. I also have no idea why people are upset and surprised that we only have two primetime games. Again, be happy that we have more primetime games than five other teams in the NFL and as many as four other teams. So we're like in the bottom nine of primetime games, but we're not at the very bottom like the Carolina Panthers. And also... We drafted Jaden Daniels second overall. I get that. And we signed the most veteran free agents out of the entire NFL in this past free agency. I get that. And most people feel like we killed the draft. And then on top of that, we have new ownership, new management, front office, coaching staff, entirely new coaching staff and all of that. But we still haven't done anything yet. Y'all got to remember that we went 4-13 and last year, y'all. And especially after the Panthers had a very similar coaching staff overhaul as to like, like we did this offseason. They did it last season on paper, their coaching staff look great and they drafted a quarterback first overall in 2023 when we drafted a quarterback second overall you see the parallels right there the NFL wanted to bet on them to be pretty good and then they still ended up being the worst team in the NFL so I don't blame the NFL for not jumping the gun and assuming that we will go out there and be worthy to have more primetime games than the two that they already gave us and on top of that just to let you know, to remind y'all, week 17 and 18 have the potential to be flexed into more primetime games for the commanders, depending on what we're looking like by then. So it's in our control if we want more. If we look like we're really competing for the playoffs, then we can end up with as many as four primetime games. They can flex us to week 17 and 18 having primetime games then. So they gave us two primetime games on the house. Those are for free. You have those just off of the strength. And then we have the potential to go out there and earn two more. So don't be mad at the NFL. If anything, be mad at the previous regime for being so bad last year. But then again, shouts out to him because that second overall pick is the reason we were able to get Jaden Daniels and is the reason why we're going to have a lot of primetime games in the future, I'm assuming, because I see us being Super Bowl contenders. You know what I'm saying? Now moving on. The Commanders will open their season on the road for the first time since 2019, which is actually really interesting. And we will face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this game will force two Heisman winning quarterbacks and Jaden Daniels and Baker Mayfield, who won it all the way back in 2017. Jaden Daniels won it in 2023, so six years later, to go against each other. So I like that matchup. Two Heisman trophy winners right there. That, pro that game will probably be watched a little bit more than what most Commanders fans probably expect. Also, thinking about that opening game against the Buccaneers, please pray for this secondary please keep them in your prayers throughout this entire offseason because mike evans week one is a lot to ask of this group that just got put together this offseason mike evans has statistically been the literally number one most consistent wide receiver in like the last five day years i provided y'all a statistic and advanced stat a few days ago in a Rico report where Terry McLaurin was the second most consistent receiver over the last five years. Mike Evans was the number one most consistent receiver as far as having a certain amount of yards every season. And so St. Juice, we gonna need you. Pass rush, who we really gonna need y'all. But if we end up winning that game, imagine how hype the home game opener versus the Giants the week after that week two is gonna be. Like 1-0 going into our first home game with this new front office, new coaching staff, new roster led by a new franchise quarterback. That thing gonna be hype. It's gonna be sold out. I'm super excited. So can we please win that game against the Buccaneers so we can go into that Giants game with an immense amount of hype and excitement, man. And energy, man. That tell is gonna be legendary that thing gonna be a party also the commanders will head west in week four to take an offensive coordinator cliff kingsbury's former team the arizona cardinals 
who, who he was the head coach for for a couple of years. Zach Ertz also played for them for a couple of years as well. So that's a revenge game for him too. That is Washington's longest road trip of the season. That's also really interesting. We're going to definitely dive into that because last season they had three West Coast games against the Denver Broncos, Seattle Seahawks, and the Los Angeles Rams. But this season, we actually travel the fewest linear miles of any team out of the entire NFL. That's actually really cool. To be exact, we have to travel 10,550 miles, which takes me to my next graphic to show y'all as you can see on your screen right now. Now we do not travel and have to go through and change the least amount of time zones, but we do travel the least distance out of any nfl team we travel the fewest miles and i'll take it man i'm not gonna lie i mean with nine home games plus the baltimore game and only one road trip west of the mississippi i mean that's actually incredible how the the nfl schedule makers gave us the head i mean even though again your opponents are pretty much already you can you can go look right now who we play in 2025 as far as home and away we just don't know when everything will happen and things like that but still man i mean i hey the the luck just rolled in our favor for this schedule and i'm excited about that and we do our most of our traveling in the beginning of the schedule if you really pay attention and that could actually be a good and a bad thing. It's going to be a bad thing because we are the newest team and the, we have the most roster turnover out of the entire NFL going from the 2023 season to the 2024 season. So if any team needs as much help as possible early in their schedules, it's us. But at the same time, imagine if we do survive that rough stretch of traveling the first four weeks uh, it, at Tampa Bay week one, at Cincinnati week three, and then at Arizona week four then we are good to go for the rest of the schedule. I mean, we don't necessarily have like the the toughest opponent schedule wise for the remainder of the schedule, but at least travel wise after those first four weeks, we are good to go. Them guys will be able to rest as long as they want before games and things like that. So not only do we travel the least far out of any team in the NFL this upcoming season, but we also get most of our worst travels, our furthest travels out of the way within the first four weeks. So if we walk out of that with like a two and two record, I'll count that as a win, man. I'm not going to lie. And if you think about it, like I briefly mentioned earlier, since we're playing Baltimore in Baltimore, and it didn't matter if it was home or away for this stat specifically, but the commanders played 10 of their 18 games in Maryland. That's that's actually pretty crazy. I don't expect us to end up with a schedule like that again anytime soon. Like, that's incredible. 10 of our 18 regular season games, we play in the state of Maryland. Because, again, Baltimore counts as one of them. And then also, the Commanders will play against six 2023 playoff teams. But I wouldn't be surprised if it actually ends up being a higher number of teams that end up making the playoffs in 2024. Because I wouldn't be surprised if teams like the Bears and the Falcons end up making the playoffs this upcoming 2024 season, even though they didn't in 2023. So our schedule may actually end up being a little bit harder than it actually looks right now based on 2023 win percentages also once again the commanders will close out their season against the cowboys at home that just seems to be a thing that just always happens interesting washington has faced dallas in week 18 of the last two seasons but this one will have even more significance with the hiring of dan quinn the cowboys former defensive coordinator and the signings of multiple ex-cowboys including defensive end Dorrance Armstrong Tyler B addition to our new starting center and don't forget Joe Witt Jr who is now our current defensive coordinator and so that this is now three seasons in a row where we finished the season with against Dallas remember the first time a couple of years ago the end of the 2022 season was Sam Howell's first start and then the end of last season went terribly but I mean I guess thank goodness because it helped us get the second overall pick and then now we got to do it again in 2024. And then also, unlike last season, when the Commanders had a brutal schedule, the eighth toughest based on opponents combined record the previous season, the 2024 slate is tied for the 16th most difficult. Now, of course, that metric can mean very little because, again, the Chicago Bears, for existence, have retooled their roster significantly since they faced the Commanders last. Also, the Commanders will host the Tennessee Titans, who hired Brian Callahan as their head coach shortly after finishing fourth in the AFC South last season, and the Bears, who were fourth place finishers in the NFC North, and that matchup will pit Jaden Daniels against top overall pick Caleb Williams, so it will be the only the sixth time in the common draft era that rookie quarterbacks selected with the first and second overall picks face each other in the subsequent season. That game will also be the first against the Bears since Montez Sweat 
was traded from the Washington Commanders to the Bears. And so I think that's pretty cool. I, I think that's a really interesting. There's a few storylines in that Chicago Bears matchup right there. Also, it's been a long time since the Commanders have gone to the Bengals home field. The Cincinnati was technically the home team in 2016, but that game was played in the United Kingdom. You must go all the way back to 2008 for the last time the Washington Commanders played the Bengals in Ohio. And remember, that was when Jason Campbell led the team against the Bengals and future Washington quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's actually really crazy when you think about the fact that Ryan Fitzpatrick played at the same time that Jason Campbell did. I don't know why it just seems like there's such a big gap between them, but it really isn't because we signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. He was already well into his 30s, so it makes sense. Also, Shouts out to Rush Manual for this one, but that Monday night game against the Cincinnati Bengals will be an ABC exclusive and one of two Monday night games that night. The last time the Washington Commanders were on ABC on a Monday night, it was that Cowboys game where we were down 0-13 to late in the fourth quarter and Mark Brunel threw two deep bombs to Santana Moss to win 14-13 to pretty much at the last second. And I remember that game so vividly because as a Commanders fan that was not even born to early enough to see any of our Super Bowls, I missed all of that. My whole life as a Commanders fan has pretty much been Dan Snyder. And so that's easily one of the most memorable and greatest moments of my Commanders fandom lifetime. Easily top five for me. So I remember remember that game vividly Dan, I remember watching it live as like a little tiny kid uh, like in early elementary school having the time of my life and I'll never forget that game so that's a really interesting connection there that's also going to be a double LSU quarterback game so there's probably going to be a lot of LSU jerseys in the crowd between Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels by that point also quarterback wise just so speaking of quarterback speaking of Joe Burrow it's quite a gauntlet that we have to go against. It may not necessarily be the scariest list of quarterbacks, but it's also not sweet. As you can see on your screen, of course, we have to play Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, and Daniel Jones twice each, but we also got to go against Kirk Cousins with the Falcons. Kyler Murray trying to get revenge against his former head coach. They had a huge rift. They definitely did not see eye to eye. So Kyler Murray is going to be motivated. And remember, he won a fifth rookie of the year at one point and was like an MVP candidate before they completely fell off the face of the earth a, a few years ago. And then Bryce Young. You have, of course, Lamar Jackson, Caleb Williams, like we've already talked about, Joe Burrow. We'll see if Deshaun Watson can get any of his Texan self back. Derek Carr's decent. Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, one or the other. Baker Mayfield and will levis again not the scariest quarterback gauntlet but also not very sweet and then also just to let you know so far the commanders open as 4.5 underdogs in week one against tampa bay according to fd sportsbook so there goes your motivation throughout training camp commanders players and coaches there goes your bulletin board material screenshot those odds and hang it up as a picture in every room of y'all's houses commanders players and coaches that should be y'all motivation to do that extra push-up that extra lap because we're already being doubted and we haven't even gotten through all, all the way through voluntary mini because we haven't even started mandatory mini camps and people are already assuming that we're going to lose that week one game so use that as motivation now let's go even deeper now we're getting to the the boss level of difficulty here as far as we're diving into strategic observations now and shouts out to zach selby for most of these because these are some really interesting statistics right here and information background stuff that you need to know about the schedule so first of all kirk cousins now with the atlanta falcons will play at commander's field in week 17 and landover maryland and it will be his third visit to landover since leaving the franchise and he hasn't lost as a visitor yet just to give you that heads up but at the same time the commanders will play the falcons for the fourth consecutive season and who knows how the addition of Kirk Cousins will affect this new team, but we can expect the matchup to be close. And the last three games between the two squads were all decided by less than a touchdown and came down to the last drive, and we just kept winning them. So even though Falcons versus Commanders-wise, we keep beating them, but we haven't necessarily been beating Kirk Cousins himself. So we'll see how which one of those statistics ends up outweighing the other. Also, the Giants brought some of the most pressure in the NFL last season under Wink Martindale with blitzing opponent 45.4% of the time. So no matter what new Giants defensive coordinator Shane Bowen does with the unit, expect the commanders to be under duress on significantly fewer snaps 
than last season as the Titans, Bowen's previous team only blitzed 22% of the time and had one of the lowest hurry rates, 6.3% in the NFL last year. So the way that we had to deal with the Giants last year, we should not have to deal with the same levels of pressure this year, but we'll see. The talent is still there, and if anything, they got even more pass rush help, but at the same time, they have a different defensive coordinator, and they're going from one of the most blitzing defensive coordinators in the NFL to one of the least blitzing ones. Also, moving on, Jalen Hurts generated the second most rushing first downs in the NFL last year, many of which were, of course, the result of the infamous tush push the eagles aren't going to abandon the play now even though jason kelsey has retired but it will be interesting to see how this will be affected by his presence will they be as effective at it will they be as efficient at the tush push now that they don't have their future hall of fame center there we'll see how that goes also moving on cowboys quarterback Dak prescott had one of his worst seasons in 2022 both from an injury and performance perspective hitting career lows in, in completions with 261 qbr 59.9 and intercepts 15 on top of throwing for just 2,860 yards but then he responded by having one of his best seasons of his career in 2023 leading the league in completions with 410 touchdowns with 36 and ranking third in passing yards with 4,516 so if he's the type of guy that has a down season up season then down season trajectory wise projection wise maybe he'll have a down season in 2024 maybe he just doesn't like even number seasons we'll see also Bryce Young was one of the most harassed quarterbacks in 2023 experiencing 150 pressures and he had a completion rate of 39.1 percent under duress which ranks 61st among all active quarterbacks 61st that's crazy compared to his 69.6 completion percentage when left clean so we know going into that game we got to get pressure on bryce young to force him to be terrible also, all of Washington's wins over the Panthers have been decided by eight points or fewer throughout our entire history of playing them. That's actually really crazy. Next up, Nick Chubb, Georgia Dog experienced a scary injury that ended his season in 2023 but he's had several of those even dating back to the georgia boy i don't think y'all understand how great how ridiculous nick chubb would be if he never had a leg injury he has now had like three severe career ending ones i believe at this point imagine y'all y'all just don't know even in his prime with the cleveland browns he still has never been what he was at his best before he ever had a leg injury at georgia i just want y'all to know how scary he should he he could have been but assuming he comes back healthy, he's probably still going to be very difficult to bring down. He ranked in the top three in yards after contact in 2021, where he came in second place, and 2022, when he came in third place, the last time that he had majority healthy seasons. And then speaking of a lot of Georgia Bulldogs, there's a reason why the Steelers have never had a losing record under Mike Tomlin. His teams normally win late in the season. Since 2007, the Steelers have a 47 and 28 record in December. So keep that in mind. Luckily, we play them in November. You don't want to play them in December but we'll see what happens there also the Titans have done significant work over the last two seasons to overhaul the receiving corps signing DeAndre Hopkins last offseason and bringing in Tyler Boyd and Calvin Ridley this offseason do not forget that so while most teams are trying to get younger at the position and just tend to instead of paying a veteran wide receiver big money just go draft the guy in the first second third or maybe even fourth round that you can expect to step in day one and contribute immediately the Titans on the other hand are taking a completely different approach and they are the only team out of the entire NFL to have their receiving corps average over 30 years old of age that's actually really interesting as well but they got some dogs man tyler boyd is your third option again Kylie, man and then the commanders have had their issues at quarterback but the bears have a much longer history of woes at the position they have never had a quarterback throw for 4,000 yards or 30 touchdowns in their whole history of being a franchise and not that college numbers should matter much in the nfl but caleb williams has a shot of making franchise history just from being halfway decent also, speaking of Chicago, Chicago is Washington's most common playoff opponent. They have met seven times in the postseason with Washington holding, holding a 4-3 advantage right now. Four wins, three losses over the Bears. So we'll see if we'll end up meeting them in the playoffs with a first overall and second overall pick quarterback on each team. So that's, that's pretty cool. And then the Saints season didn't end the way that they won it, despite winning four of their last five games. So they're coming into this season pretty hot. But they still had one of the most productive offenses and stingiest defenses. They were one of only five teams out of the entire NFL last year to finish top 10 in scoring offense ninth and defense eighth. 
So watch out for the Saints. They may be a little bit better than you remember and think they are. Also, it was a career year for Mayfield in several categories last season, all of which highlighted that the former number one overall pick can still deliver as a passer. He had 2,103 completed air yards, his most since 2020, which ranked 11th in the NFL last year. So we're also going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that's led by Baker Mayfield, who's honestly the best he's been since he's been drafted, his rookie season, arguably. And then also, despite there only being 37 miles between their stadiums, the Commanders and Ravens actually don't play very often. There are only seven matchups in the Battle of the Beltway, and the last one came all the way back in 2020. And aside from two games where Baltimore won by two touchdowns, five of the games were decided by less than seven points. It's crazy that we pretty much only play them like every four years, if not longer spans of time. Whereas we played the Falcons back to back to back to back years in a row. I don't even get that. They're right there. But maybe we don't play them in the regular season because we played them so often in the preseason. And like I questioned earlier, how we don't play the Ravens in the preseason this year, maybe that's because we play them in the regular season this year. I don't know, but that's super weird. Also, the Commanders are playing the Cardinals in Arizona for the first time since 2020, and history shows that they usually have success against them. They lead all the all-time series 78 wins 47 losses and two ties which comes out to a 0.622 winning percentage that ranks as the franchise's sixth best win loss rate among active teams and so then i had to go and do my own research and digging to see who we have the best records against we have jacksonville jaguars number one i mean you also have other teams like the baltimore colts the staten island stapletons boston yanks new york yanks and brooklyn tigers we're ignoring those out of the active teams that actually exist right now the jacksonville jaguars we we have a 0.875 win percentage against them, seven wins, one loss. Then you have the Seattle Seahawks. We are 13 and seven against them with a 0.65 winning percentage. Then you have the Los Angeles Rams. We are 24, 13 and one against them. Detroit Lions, 28 and 16 against them. The Atlanta Falcons. Yes, sir. I love to hear it. 17 and 10 against them with a 0.625 win percentage. Let's make that 18 and 10. Oh, it's actually 17, 10 and one. So let's make that 18, 10 and one this upcoming season and then the arizona cardinals again like i just told y'all sixth place 78 47 and two we've played them by far the most out of the other top teams we have a great winning percentage against and then also moving on washington in total has scored 3572 points against the eagles throughout our history of playing each other and that is the most it has scored against any other team in the nfl really random but i just thought i should include that shouts out to zach selby and also the commanders have an all-time winning record against 10 of their 14 opponents on the schedule let's keep it that way let's actually make it more than that you know what i'm saying let's get it also shouts out to james palmer for this stat in 19 of the last 21 seasons at least one team 19 of the last 21 seasons let me let me emphasize that at least one team has gone from worst to first winning his division the season after finishing in or tied for last place the texans did it last year who will do it in 2024 the patriots nope Bengals, maybe titans doubt it chargers i will see commanders we'll see bears it's just really because the other, the other teams in that division are crazy, but I don't sleep on the Bears. Panthers, highly doubted, and the Cardinals, also highly doubted. So I would say that we are one of the, the three teams that probably have the best chance of doing it, but we got to see. We got to go out there and play the games. Also, now moving on to the final part of this video, random observations that don't necessarily deal with the commanders, but are still very interesting. Let's dive into that. First of all, shouts out to at my sports update again, just to let you know the Chiefs schedule again random but very interesting includes 10 games on sunday two games on monday one game on wednesday one game on thursday one game on friday one game on saturday and then one game without a day set yet so as of right now the only game day of the week that the chiefs do not play on this upcoming season is tuesday and they still have one to be determined game that could eventually end up actually potentially being flexed at even though that it says that it can only has the potential to be flexed to saturday or sunday you never know games get canceled Canceled. we'll see but as of right now the chiefs right now 
play every day of the week except for Tuesday. That is insane. Also, shouts out to the 2024 international schedule. The Green Bay Packers and Eagles play in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The Jets versus the Vikings. Jaguars versus the Bears. And Patriots versus the Jaguars. Jaguars got to do it twice in one season. Play in London, England. And then the Giants and the Panthers play in Munich, Germany. Dang, man. Jaguars got to play two games in England this season. That is actually really crazy, man. And so, shouts out to the Commanders because you don't have to go through that. And that's why we have one of the least, well, we are the least traveled team schedule wise because we don't have to travel all the way to the UK or Brazil or Germany. That's crazy. And the NFL is going full throttle with strong arming and bullying the NBA by fully taking over Chris. That it's actually insane. There used to be like an unwritten rule, it seemed, to where the NFL had Thanksgiving, the NBA had Christmas, you stay in your lane, I'll stay in mine. Then as of last season, they said, give me that holiday too. And so then now they're continuing their onslaught into 2024 as well because they have multiple games on Christmas this upcoming season. And I feel really sorry for the NBA there, man, because they took over Christmas last year with, all, with winning the ratings battle right there. And it looks like they're probably going to do the same thing again. As you can see on your screen, I'm just giving you the overall 2024 NFL schedule grid so you can see every game that every team plays, just so you can get a, like a nice visual of it. And just to let you know, the Kansas City Chiefs are heading to Pittsburgh to face the Steelers as the first matchup on Christmas. And then the Ravens go to Houston to take on the Texans for the second game on Christmas. And both of those games should be really good. But hey, man, I'm happy that the Commanders don't have to play on Christmas. But golly, man, you got to feel sorry for the NBA just a little bit, man. They, they lose the rating battles automatically. I know a lot of people think the NFL isn't king in America, but it is. I, it is. And the NFL, as you can see, are even trying to take over internationally. Now, it's going to be forever before they outpace the NBA as far as worldwide reach and international reach and things like that. But, boy, the, you can't tell me the NFL isn't trying. Having games in Brazil, three games in the UK, and one game in Germany. Golly. And also... Just to let you know, this Christmas game will be exclusively streamed on Netflix for some stupid reason, which takes me to my next point that this streaming service situation that the NFL has going on right now is out of control. With the two Christmas games that will be exclusively on Netflix, the NFL reaffirms its commitment to putting some packages on streaming platforms. It's out of control. That includes the deal with Amazon for every Thursday night game and the NFL Sunday ticket gets all of the Sunday games at least 1 and 4 p.m. But after that, it's it's over with and then peacock even had a playoff game last season this is getting out of hand i am scared and then also have y'all seen the patriots schedule man i know they only ranked eighth in strength of schedule but that is from the 2023 results of win percentages 2024 looks completely different especially like the jets who were terrible last season if aaron Rodgers is healthy this season that's going to be a completely different team and poor drake may if he ever starts this season because look at this Bengals, seahawks jets 49ers, Dolphins, Texans, Jaguars, Jets, Titans, Bears, Rams, Dolphins, Colts, Cardinals, Bills, Chargers, Bills. Oh my lord. If they win four games, I'd be shocked. I'm not going to lie, man. They about to have a top three pick again. Back-to-back -back seasons. Like the Browns? They're, they may have the toughest schedule based on 2023 win percentages, but even their schedule doesn't look that scary. Now, the Browns schedule is scary, very scary indeed, but the Patriots schedule is hilariously scary, man, especially with how bad they're projected to be, what they got to deal with, especially the end of the season. The end of the season, Bills charges Bills is insane. Who did that to them boys, man? The Bills may be in the position to where they can rest their starters by week 18 against them. And just let y'all know just to go ahead and give this uh this update and this heads up even though i didn't talk about it in this video that was that was deliberate that was on purpose i'm gonna do a record prediction in a separate video because i want to really break it all the way down with the stats and matchup now that third part of the video before we got to the rest of the nfl the most recent part that last part that we just did where i gave y'all a lot of stats as far as matchups and things like that i'm gonna include those again in that video but i'm gonna do a really deep dive into every opponent and we're gonna go 
game by game and be like win loss score prediction why why not where do we have the advantages offensive line versus defensive line and things like that so stay tuned for that i will probably come out with that video tomorrow maybe friday so just stay tuned for that because i didn't want to include that in this video we're already over 40 minutes into recording in this one i already knew that this video was going to take a long time and i want to really sit down and focus on uh, actual score prediction a record prediction i don't want to just come up with a random number off the top of my head so that video is going to probably be like 30 40 minutes long as well so be gonna look out for that within tomorrow or the day after that but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video please stiff on that like button stiff on the subscription button stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one i appreciate y'all patience i know i'm coming out with my schedule preview and breakdown and analysis and all that type of stuff really late i mean it's 11 34 p.m eastern time right now by the time y'all actually get this video it'll probably be 1 a.m so i really appreciate y'all patience and pulling up to the video even though y'all probably already watched other people's breakdowns because again i'm so late but i really appreciate y'all pulling up do not leave this video without leaving a like and of course let me know how you feel about all of the points that i brought up do you agree or disagree with any of my points let me know if you have any observations that i didn't include in this video because i'm pretty sure i missed something so let me know what that is i I want this video especially this comment section to basically be a form of the most analytics analytical observation of this schedule possible so even anything that i miss i want y'all included in the comment section and i'm gonna try to do my best to read and reply to as many of those as possible because i want us to one video at a time be a smarter fan base especially as a commander's fan base so i really appreciate y'all make sure you stay tuned because again like i gave you the heads up i'm working on film sessions for our rookie class stay tuned for that i'm gonna keep y'all updated on every practice that we have access to if we get any information if we get any pictures any clips any videos i got y'all covered on that every day that we have it and i have, again i have a lot of video ideas that i'm working on so stay tuned for those as well a lot of fun ones a lot of depth chart projections and things like that so stay tuned i'm gonna catch y'all later appreciate y'all i'm out